Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us today as we have our first webinar for our new robo-advisor, DF Direct. Essentially, today, we're going to be trying to accomplish a few goals. Uh, the main thing I want you guys to take away is the things not to do as a US expat, and then how do we get started? Um, how do we start our plan? Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to ask them in the chat. Ruben will be able to chat with you on there, or he'll interrupt me if it has to do with the conversation. And otherwise, I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as possible so that we have as much time as possible for any questions that are going on. John Burrow once said, a man can fail many times, but he isn't a failure until he begins to blame somebody else. Despite these wise words, we are in the age of Trump and Brexit. Therefore, let's start to point fingers. Most all American expats have had many negative ramifications from the Foreign Account Tax Compliancy Act, also known as FATCA. In fact, it might have led to the closing of your brokerage account in the United States or even your non-US bank telling you to go elsewhere. So it's Obama's fault, right? Not exactly. When you follow along with FATCA brought about, it's really introduced ways that American expats could get caught while not declaring taxes, owning PFIX, or even not declaring taxes that were owed. So if Obama just built a means to catch non-compliant individuals, why did everything change for expats in 2010? Well, rules from past presidents started to be enforced. Ronald Reagan, the beloved president that was in favor of cutting taxes, added a huge tax to American expats with foreign investments with the introduction of PFIC rules, also known as passive foreign investment companies. These were designed to prevent Americans from owning managed vehicles from foreign jurisdictions. So what about the notorious Nixon? In 1970, Richard Nixon signed into place the Bank Secrecy Act, and American expats had to report all foreign bank accounts that aggregate to over 10,000 US dollars. They have subsequently never increased this amount to meet inflation growth. If you haven't provided these documents, they can lead towards large fines. All the while, no tax is ever owed on these declarations to the Treasury Department. Until FATCA, Nixon and all subsequent presidents had no means to police the foreign banks and to enforce the rules. For the sake of pinning the blame for the frustrations behind being an American expat, we blame Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln may have abolished slavery in the United States, but made any American that moved out of the country de facto slaves, of which no other country other than Eritrea follows the logic, and even Canada has banned them from being able to do so. Abraham Lincoln introduced citizens-based taxation with the first income tax signed on August 5, 1861, and was a measly 3% of income to help fund the North in the Civil War efforts. All of the above culminated in what is now known as the FATCA Accords established by Barack Obama. This law was designed to increase the compliance of U.S. taxpayers that had reporting requirements for financial accounts that were held in foreign jurisdictions. To ensure compliance throughout the chain, the new framework imposed legislation onto both the individual and the financial institutions that service the U.S. persons. This led to the stricter reporting standards and larger penalties being imposed for non-compliance. With the newfound power in place, the FATCA Accords essentially became the international policing force for U.S. persons with foreign accounts and assets. With over 113 countries having signed up to comply with the U.S. FATCA rules and an additional 200,000 plus institutions having registered with the IRS. So we've established the problems that, that, that affect us all as Americans, FATCA, FBARs, PFIX. These are things that we have to navigate through. And essentially, we need to make sure that we're compliant in our home jurisdiction, uh, being the country you're resident in and back in the United States. Um, so what we really want to establish is where should we have our banking and investment account relationships? Where should we be keeping our assets? 
And in most every situation, it is easier and better to be more compliant to keep your assets based in the United States. And we'll base this on a, on a few different elements. First of all, taxes. We avoid ever owning a PFIC, a PFIC being a passive foreign investment company, if we own our investments in the United States. Owning a PFIC becomes expensive and cumbersome. Uh, these are essentially any foreign investments. So if you bought an investment in Europe, it's most likely a PFIC. Whereas if we buy exchange traded funds in the United States, we're going to go ahead and reduce that tax because, uh, well, we're going to remove that tax because we own non-PFIC investments. Uh, the second aspect, if we have a U.S. brokerage firm, uh, we're going to have a 1099. That 1099 is going to make those U.S. taxes much easier and conforming with the European or UK side will be just as easy because the tax documents will, will clear over. We won't have to make an FBAR de declaration because we don't have a foreign account. And um, because of regulation that dates back nearly a century, uh, we have more safety in US accounts than in most other jurisdictions. Uh, we have SIPC um, uh, uh, protection uh, and FDIC protection for banking assets and brokerage assets. Most every brokerage also has uh, other rules protecting those assets. But the last one's probably the most interesting one. These are much cheaper for brokerages in the States. So keeping our assets have five reasons uh, to, to, to make them US bound and it will keep things a lot cheaper. Now, if you're in countries like the UK or Austria, they have certain rules of which investments you can hold. All of our portfolios are going to be completely compliant on the UK side. If you happen to be in Austria, make sure to reach out to our team and um, they'll help you manually get an Austrian compliant portfolio. But everything else is going to be compliant both on the European, UK side and the US side. All of our portfolios are going to have the ability to have more of a natural currency hedge. Now, just to take you through what a natural currency hedge is, is that essentially, whenever we want to go ahead and minimize our different risks of currency, we might own more in the currency of where we're going to live or retire in. Now, if you think of that as a CD, if we have a US dollar CD, but you live in Europe, the dollar goes up as it has for the last 15, 16 years, that's great. But if the dollar goes down, you end up with less money, even if you get more interest. So anytime we're establishing different goals, we want to go ahead and make sure that we're taking the risk appropriately. So if we're living in the UK, we have short-term goals, we might want to have GBP uh, fixed income. Now, if you look at our current portfolios, there's not a huge difference between the amount that's in uh, US dollars, euros, or GBP. Um, that is because we have had a long period of time where the dollar has been strong. And with the moves of the central banks, there's no indication that that's going to stop anytime soon. But when that turns around, we want to be able to make sure that we have the ability to purchase and to change the portfolios so that they're mostly derived in the currencies limiting the risk for you because you're living in those zones. That is called natural currency hedging. Now, why would you want to use DF Direct as a solution? Well, simply put, it's a US compliant investment vehicle that also meets the criteria in most every other jurisdiction. It's low cost and there's no minimums. It's only half a percent per annum so just to put that in terms, if you deposit $10,000 into DF Direct, it's going to cost you $50 a year. It's going to come out quarterly, so $12.50 each quarter. If the value of the account goes up, the fee goes up that little bit. If the value goes down, it goes down that little bit. Now, all that being said, that includes the platform fees, the trading fees, and our management fees. So there's no other hidden fees that are going to just stack up. Uh, in those ways, and there's no minimum or contract terms. So you can send in as little as $50 every single month. 
if you wanted to. And if in six months you needed access to that money, there's no penalties to take it out. So no cost to get the money in, no cost to get the money out. It's nice and easy um, directly through that platform. And it's all fully digital. So you can set up the account directly online. Um, takes a few minutes to do. And uh, you can fund it directly online or take withdrawals directly online. You don't have to go through any back office. So what is it really? It's a digital solution so that you can get your money in a compliant manner into portfolios that are going to meet your country regulations. Where do we start? We'll take you over to the website in a moment. We can create a profile and then you can fund the account with absolutely no problem. 75% of expats are sitting on excess cash, worried about how to get themselves going. This is a great way to get started and get moving in those compliant manners. I'll give you a few resources and then we'll go over to the website and take a look. We have a copy of our US expat guide. If any of you would like a copy of it, you can go to our website and otherwise drop Ruben uh, an email afterwards and he'll get you a, a complimentary copy. It goes through all of the different aspects that you wanna think about from social security to double taxation agreements and how to navigate retirement accounts. So a great resource on how to build your financial plan. Also, if you're wanting to talk to your congressman or your senator on different advocacy, different things that we need as American citizens abroad, you should check out American citizens abroad. I'm on, on the advisory committee over there, and we are literally your lobbyists to try to make it a much easier to be an American living abroad starting from back in the 1970s when they were working towards getting us the right to vote. So we've had it worse, it's getting better, but that is your group to be your, your advocate. Also, a couple little resources if you're having tax questions. Anytime you're setting up investments, you wanna make sure that it's copacetic with your tax situation. So on the left-hand side, uh, we've given you an article on passive foreign investment companies. We're not trying to be tax advisors in any way, shape, or form, but by Googling passive foreign investment companies, you'll find most every accountant out there is negative about owning PFIX. So they would discourage you buying any foreign investments, and that's why they like these types of solutions of investing the money on the US side of things. And the other side is American overseas. If you're struggling finding somebody to help you find a tax preparer. They're a Dutch-based organization that works with Americans all around the world to help pair them up with any tax accountant that might be able to help in their situation. The last one is how people are regulated. So this gives you the example of the US side and the UK side of things. Uh, we're regulated in Europe, the UK, and the United States. This is how we're able to give advice on those sides. Our sister firm, Dunhill Financial, is a full financial planning firm in which we build full financial plans. DF Direct is built so that it's just man managing those assets. So if you're not needing to talk to somebody on a regular basis to build that full financial plan, it's just a cheaper way to get your money working for you. Now, if we go to dfdirect.com, essentially it's as easy as this. On the top bar, um, you're gonna find your blog and your frequently asked questions. Check those out and you'll be able to answer most of the questions you might have. But if you just click on the get started button, what you're gonna find is a series of questions of where you live and where you potentially will end up. Now, we know that we want to keep doors open. So don't worry if you're not for sure if you're going to stay in the UK, you can still answer that you live in the UK now, 
and potentially in the future. So don't get hung up on that. It doesn't have to be exact from that vantage point. Uh, but then you're selecting which goal you might have, whether it be just general education or retirement. Um, this is just going to affect the time horizon that you might have. And then you can get a little bit more exact on what the time horizon would be. If you're going to retire, but you're going to be a young retiree, it's always going to be 16 years or more. It's not the number of years until you get to retirement because you're not going to spend all of your money in the first year of retirement. At that point in time, how important is it to get the money out? How much experience you have? Well, I've been doing this for 20 something years, so a lot of experience. And how you look at your returns. Would I like to maximize long-term returns, um, but also deal with fluctuation? We have to remember that the markets are only up 70% of the time. So three out of every 10 years, we're gonna have losses. So if that starts to make you panic, we wanna be more on the protecting of our value, but we're gonna get less returns. If we wanna set it and forget it, and get better returns, but know that three out of every 10 years, we're going to lose money. We want to be on that maximizing of the long-term effects. At this point in time, we're literally just going to put in our email address, and we will get a confirmation email sent to us. From there, it's going to prepare our investment solutions. And we have two potential selected portfolios. I'm gonna take the growth portfolio just because I'm not as aggressive as you might think. We're only using exchange traded funds. These are low cost ways of us getting into the market and getting fully diversified but they're gonna be compliant. So they're gonna be on the HMRC list here in the UK. They're gonna be MIFID compliant in Europe and US compliant from there. We're gonna have exposure to all the global markets and we're gonna keep it diversified. And if we cl click on this, select this portfolio, essentially we're gonna be able to select what kind of account do we want? Do we want an IRA or an individual account? And we're just gonna fin finish each of our pieces of information in here, including our social security number and such. Once we've gotten through all of that information, if you try to click through, as you can see, it won't let me go through there. You'll just look through our agreements and you've signed up for your account. So you can see it takes less than five minutes. Now, we might have some questions on our part portfolios, so I will take you to the portfolio list, but it will show up inside of, uh, inside of uh, the system as well. And you're going to be able to see the breakdown of every single fund that we own. So the funds essentially break down to an ownership where our top 10 holdings include Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Alphabet, Meta, um, and the likes. So we're getting exposure to all of our US uh, big names, but we're getting diversification across the world. You can see our long-term performance uh, since we started running these funds in an open format, uh, have been consistent with the markets and this is displayed after the advisory fee on there. Each and every one of our portfolios are listed on the website and you can pull those. Otherwise, if you reach out to Ruben, he will be able to uh, send you exactly which piece you might want to look at or answer any questions that you may have. Um, but they're built to be your conservative based portfolios it will go up and down with the markets. They're designed in what's called a core plus satellite approach. Now the core portion has to be at minimum 80%. These are positions that we intend to own for the long term. 
We want to do that to minimize the actual trading inside of the account to reduce the tax. Now, the 20% are not high exciting, uh, high flyers that are trying to increase performance. Instead, what they are, are essentially uh, pieces to reduce the risk and those will actually increase performance over the course of time. So a lot of times that's actually managing the fixed income side of the portfolio or buying pieces of the portfolio like healthcare that are lower cost than the tax sector, but that have anticipated higher earnings. You'll be able to join our economic updates that are on a quarterly basis. And Cam and I go through exactly what's going on in the portfolio and in the, in the overall economic market. On our Dunhill Financial YouTube page, you can find all of the past economic updates. So please check those out or reach out to Ruben and you'll be able to find those. Uh, any questions you might have, please put them in the chat or the Q&A. I see the first one here. Can I choose portfolio currency or only available in, in USD? That's a great question, Ari. So right now, everything is in USD. Um, we anticipate hopefully by the end of the year that we'll be able to have multiple currencies and a currency toggle inside of the system. Um, so right now you have to deposit doll US dollars, um, have US dollars come out and the reporting is all in US dollars, but the availability will come in the future to have GBP and Euro inside of the account. Our providers can access it, but we wanted to get to market first instead of uh, being in a hurry to wait for that. Do we have social responsibility, especially carbon-free options? So in, in our customized portfolios, we do a lot when it comes to ESG. Uh, and uh, essentially, those options are not available inside of the robo just yet. Uh, the main reason why is, as I was talking about, Austria and the UK only have certain funds that are permitted to be purchased. So for instance, uh, and, and it's not that other funds can't be purchased, it's just they're not going to be uh, taxed in the same way as ones that are HMRC approved. So for instance, VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500 is approved here in the UK. But if we bought SPY, which is still the S&P 500 just run by State Street, it's not. So instead of paying a lower capital gains tax, we would pay our earned income rate, which could be closer to 50%. Now, I personally use for a lot of other people uh, in, in other countries, DSI, which is the KLD 400, uh, a reduced version of uh, eliminating 100 stocks that are not ESG friendly. Um, it just doesn't happen to cater to UK or Austrian residents. So, we hope to be able to offer more in the future as we're asking these, these firms to try to get themselves to be HMRC compliant and the such so that we can build a full socially responsible portfolio. This is something that you're passionate about. Um, we can do it in our financial planning firm over at Dunhill Financial um, because we can actually customize all the portfolios there. Uh, but we are trying to be as socially responsible with everything that we do. You're not going to see... Uh, for instance, a oil fund inside of the portfolio or such, but naturally there's going to be oil firms inside of the S&P 500. Can you please repeat, in the EU portfolios, we can purchase U.S. ETFs that are MIFID compliant, right? So a U.S. citizen living in Europe can now purchase U.S. ETFs. That is correct. We're purchasing them for you, Paula. Um, the, the main reason why um, there's problems with a lot of people being able to buy ETFs in different places is that um, uh, essentially the U.S. states that we can only look at back performance. So when I showed you this portfolio, I'm essentially saying this is the back perform performance of that portfolio. I expect that the stock market would be up seven out of the next 10 years but I can't quote that that's going to be the performance because nobody knows what's, what's, what's ahead. Europe instead in uh, their statements states that we have to give an indicated uh, potential return. 
So if you were to buy each of these funds individually, they would have to state what you would expect them to return. So we're stating how much we expect you to return based on the portfolio put together. That's what keeps us compliant on the MIFID side, but we're only showing on an individual basis what the past performance is. That's how we're making it so that you can buy those exchange traded funds um, by buying them as a group in that way. Um, so you'll have full access to all those ETFs. It is automatically rebalanced, May. Um, we, we rebalance on a quarterly basis or any time that you're sending in new funds or taking out any funds. And like I said, there's no trading fees for any of those rebalances um, as we take care of those. And uh, Paula, you get a full 1099. Uh, the back end is supported by Drive Wealth. Some of you might not have heard of Drive Wealth. But if you've heard of Revolut, that's who they clear through on the back end. So a good, big, consistent uh, player uh, from, from that vantage point. And you get all of the U.S. protections on your account as well. So uh, full 1099 for U.S. tax reporting um, and uh, more functionality to come. Here's this is going to be a synthetic portfolios. Is there a custodian still involved for the IRA? To, uh, okay. How is one to prove that the retirement account is still fully under US re regulation? Otherwise, taxes are due in the Netherlands, which is uh, okay. Um, these these are all things that uh, Petra would be able to, to take care of uh, on, on those back ends because everything does still show on the US side. Anytime we have an IRA, it has to be held in the US. I've seen some companies state something different, but um, it's not always the case. Um, sorry, the, the dog's naturally going after the, the, the mailman there. So so don't worry, Petra, um, we'd be able to provide each of those pieces of information for you for the IRA. I think we've covered all the questions in there. If you have any other questions, um, I'm going to have uh, Ruben jump in here and introduce himself, and he'll provide you his contact details. Hello, everyone. Thank you for um, those fantastic questions. Um, a nice diverse set of queries there. Um, but as Brian said, I will just pop in my um, email address there. So as you mentioned earlier as well, um, if you're interested in getting a complimentary copy of that expat guide, then please don't hesitate to send me an email um, or any other questions that come to you um, when you're musing in the evening. Again, uh, you're most welcome to email myself, uh, ruben at dfdirect.com, and I'll be more than happy to come back to you as well with um, answers to those queries you have. So thank you again. Well, thank you everybody for joining. Um, you've got Ruben's contact details, so any questions you have, you know who to go to. And um, we look forward to seeing you really soon on one of our upcoming webinars. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks, guys.